Okay. We'll try to tackle some of that. Um, this talk is going to answer the questions, how do you maximize and protect your investment when your business relies on MediaWiki? Are there distributions backed by full-time professional support and documentation? In short, I'm going to try to review and uh, do an exploration of the available options for businesses looking for MediaWiki support. Um, I'm Greg Runlet, creator of QualityBox. QualityBox is a complete turnkey, production-ready, feature-rich, hosted solution to enterprise knowledge. Uh, it's based on MediaWiki, obviously, and the Meza system, um, it's that, which is developed here at NASA by James and Darren. And, um, it's free software and brought to you by Equality Technology. Uh, we're aiming to be the best MediaWiki hosting and support group on the planet. If you want to learn more, talk with me about our partner program. Don't worry, we uh, treat every partner as an equal. It's in our name. Every partner is either literally the owner of their own MediaWiki consultancy or part owner of Equality Technology. So I'm going to start talking a little bit about Quality Box since I started with, with that. It's, it's got batteries included. MediaWiki, not so much. What I mean is that MediaWiki software download is like a bag of raw flour. Uh, if you want to eat, you need to add butter and sugar and eggs and milk and vanilla and chocolate chips and baking soda, baking powder. Oh, wait a minute, that's chocolate chip cookies. Um, <laughs> But anyway, you get the idea. Actually, there's a lot more ingredients that go into baking an enterprise wiki. Uh, this here is the application architecture for uh, MediaWiki itself uh, as kind of implemented at the foundation. You can read more about it on my, on my wiki. But business users and owners aren't concerned with that, with that complexity. They're, they're concerned with questions and institutional knowledge, not the complexity of your network diagrams. So that's what uh, businesses, I think, expect from support organizations. And the primary service that we provide is to maintain and continuously upgrade all those uh, pieces of that complex diagram or you know, keeping the fridge stocked, I guess, if you want to make the food analogy, if I can carry that forward. <clears throat> and enterprise customers want security, uh, not some $10 a month hosting plan. So we do things like daily automatic upgrades to the Linux kernel, uh, the, all the applications, uh, the entire LAMP stack, it, it, every single bit running in the data center uh, with an audit trail, with rollback capabilities, and without, down, without downtime, zero downtime, with live kernel patching. So recently, the Wikimedia Foundation issued security patches for all versions. And I know like, w sites like Wiki Apiary, or I've got my own Wiki report tool that kind of indexes hundreds and thousands of uh, uh, wiki installations, and I know that people do not upgrade on a timely basis. So that's, that's a big um, value add to, uh, if, if you're gonna be running a piece of enterprise software, you don't wanna be the next victim of the next virus, the next security flaw. And so it should be treated like precious metals, right? <laughs> Uh, let's, let's, so let, what companies are out there? I want to talk, I just want to give a quick mention to a group I hadn't heard of. Uh, they started a couple years ago, uh, and I think the guy who started it was a former sysadmin from WMF, so maybe some people know who, who's in charge of that, but I think they're out in the Netherlands or uh, someplace else, distributed group called Mirahees, and they do, they don't offer commercial support, but what's interesting about them is they've got a totally free 
uh, and a pro, you know, kind of fully featured wiki system. And what this, what this shows is I've got a tool that does a comparison of all the extensions. If you can access the API, then, then I can just query that API and I can do an, a quick inventory of extensions, right? So these green, the extensions listed in green are the extensions that are core to Meza and to QualityBox. Um, the extensions in the middle there are additional extensions I've installed in QualityBox and tested and upgraded. Uh, and the ones on the far right are the uh, exclusive ones, the ones that aren't found either in the local customizations or the core, but uh, stuff that they're running over at Mirahees. So you can see they've got an a extensive list of extensions, and they're running on a, like a, I think a 1.29 or 1.30 platform, so uh, recent stuff. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I want to mention Blue Spice because, and, I, and unfortunately no one's here from Blue Spice, but uh, <laughs> Blue Spice is really the best option out there, uh, I think, globally uh, for MediaWiki, enterprise MediaWiki hosting and support. I mean, they have a real organization put together. They do a great job of uh, not just uh, assembling the bits and pieces of MediaWiki, the whole stack, but also uh, Marcus Glazer has put together a lot of custom code and extensions to enhance functionality. And they've got a great system for actually uh, moving content back and forth using what's called WebDave technology so that you can, you know, just seamlessly access shared drives as part of your wiki. <clears throat> um, but that's it. <laughs> Aside from Blue Spice, there really aren't any hosting companies that put together any kind of featureful, current, maintained and customized uh, full stack deployment of MediaWiki. And what you don't want, what no company wants, <clears throat> what I call the one-click wonders and the, and the $5 a month hosting plans, you've got companies like Bitnami that, um, you know, really, I think they have a good mind share, maybe they they advertise a lot, right? And one click installs of MediaWiki. Um, <clears throat> what what you get is they're running. Yeah, what you get is nothing but MediaWiki, no, no no extensions, no skins, no customization, no gadgets, no uh, Elasticsearch, no visual editor, no you know nothing. So. <clears throat> Great for a developer to spin, you know, spin something up and try it, um, but that's about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heroku uh, is is one that has a lot of uh, mind share, I think, for hosting, and they talk about uh, their whole platform as a service. But again, it's it's basically nothing more than MediaWiki Core. No skins, no extensions, no customization, no, nothing. So you're on your own, but in their environment that's designed to run Ruby, uh, Ruby apps. In fact, the branch that they use for their, uh, their one-click install is a couple commits ahead of MediaWiki core and 12,322 commits behind MediaWiki core. So, in other words, it hasn't been touched in like a year at, or more. Uh, so, you know, there's even, there are even recipes, because like, I investigated this um, for a client who's interested in, uh, in moving to that platform, comparing to, you know, Amazon and, and other, uh, you know, name, uh, name brand platforms, if you will. And, you know, what I found were how-tos just, just to get it running on Heroku. Um, and once you, if you get it running, you're stuck with Postgres as a database. And I have nothing against Postgres. Postgres is a fantastic database. But 
if you look at the data that comes out of uh, the MediaWiki installations and everything, you know, the number of installs uh, in the wild for MediaWiki on Postgres are, you know, what is it, 1%? I don't know the exact s statistics, but it's a fraction. It's a tiny fraction. And so it's just not well tested. And certainly all the extensions aren't tested on that platform. So uh, <clears throat> just no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> You've got wiki spaces. Um, or I should say you had wiki spaces. Wiki spaces just put out a notice last month that they're closing down. So <clears throat> one thing about Quality Box, we do include support, full support. In fact, we use Discourse. We've had a Discourse site running for over a year. And Discourse, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Discourse. Made by the same guy that um, started Stack Overflow and those kinds of sites. Uh, it's, a, it's a great forum tool. So, uh, <clears throat> it's, yeah, it's easy to use. Great for community, great for developers. Um, you can set up private areas so that you can have discussions that, that aren't, uh, you know, uh, just in front of everybody. And uh, one thing I want to say is that brain motif that I came up with yesterday, part of that might be because I started this project two years ago to meet the needs of Partners Healthcare in Boston, or more specifically working with um, Dr. Halley and, and Ron Kinkinis of the Surgical Planning Lab at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And what they do at uh, Surgical Planning Lab, among other things, they create a project called Slicer 3D. And Slicer 3D is a, it's a free software, cross-platform, uh, you know, open source medical image processing and visualization system. And it, it was used to create that image there. It's literally the tool that you use, if you've ever seen this on TV, where they can like scan someone's brain with an MRI or a CAT scan and get a 3D picture that, that, that the surgeon as he's operating can rotate and, and see and, and have like compute, 3D computer guided surgery. Uh, so it's really cool and they're doing it uh, across the globe. It's a, it's a, a hugely popular pro, uh, project. So um, I say quality box helps you to save your brain, right? Like, you know, store your knowledge, but Literally, maybe in a, that's a metaphorical sense, but it might also be responsible for saving your brain in the literal sense. Who knows? Uh, one last thing I want to say is that, you know, in an enterprise environment, you need <clears throat> dashboards and statistics and things to, to know how things are performing and uh, that kind of monitoring and, and professional administration of the environment. Is, is something that it obviously doesn't come with core media wiki, but it's part of the quality box platform. We do things like uh, monitoring the, the proxy, uh, monitoring for traffic analytics, monitoring the elastic search backends and the cluster health and uh, monitoring server performance and monitoring the uh, caching systems like PHP, PHP op cache. So, um, Let's see, and I think, yeah. Um, anyway, we're running some specials, so we can talk about that if, you, or if there's any, any interest there. But um, yeah, I, I thought, I really did, when I chose this topic, I thought I was gonna be able to get out there and, and at least give you a good analysis of, of a handful of, of uh, you know, high quality, vendors, but even going through the list of the, what's listed, what you'll find on MediaWiki.org as service providers, it's, it's small consultants who do custom projects and, and implementation and, or theming. Richard Carter in England does uh, theming and, you know, there's, there are small support organizations, but I'm not aware of any large scale dedicated MediaWiki and in fact, if you look at the list, there are people in there that you know, like do WordPress and they just put their name up there. <laughs> uh, and, and so 
part of, again, what I'm trying to do here is actually build that organization because there are, there are companies like, uh, what's it called? Um, it's not Site Engine, uh, uh, WordPress Engine? Oh gosh, I forget the name, but there, there are a number of you know, high profile, large companies that do support the WordPress platform or do uh, support the Drupal platform. And why don't we have that for MediaWiki? Um, so hopefully we're gonna change that. So thank you. Any questions? You mentioned, you mentioned earlier on your list of companies that do MediaWiki hosting, you mentioned Merizies. Yeah. And in that kind of niche of people kind of targeting more the free kind of audience, another popular contender is ShoutWiki. I was just curious if you've heard of them. Or I've, I have else. heard of I have heard of ShoutWiki, and are they focused on gaming? I think they're kind of focused on people who used to use Wikia and got fed up with Wikia. Is my impression. <clears throat> That's true. I'm trying to remember. Although, like Marizy's primary focus, people who used to like TV tropes, I think, and got <laughs> fed up with them and wanted a fork. So. Uh-huh. And all kind of doing that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have heard, I've heard of uh, ShoutWiki, and I can't recall what type of service level they offer. Do you know? Uh, I, I think it's mostly similar to Marahi's in that it's kind of a volunteer-run thing. Okay. And they're, they help you out, but it's not, like, you're not getting paid support, right? Yeah, you I mean... You can't call them at 1 a.m. in the morning. Right. Well, maybe you can't do that for the paid support either, but like, you know. And so the, so the question is, like, for an organization like Mozilla or some other, you know, yeah, high profile, use. large scale, million, you know, one million unique visitors a month, uh, that type of uh, environment, or not even one million a month, but just something if you've got 2,000 employees on an intranet system, you're, you're going to want, you know, continuous support, you know, quick turnaround and, can, you know, constant uptime and not a volunteer effort. So um, I, I just couldn't find anybody like that. I agree. I think it's missing and I look forward to you doing it. <laughs> any, any other questions? In the back? Yeah, just in your experience so far, have you found that there's been um, customers looking for something they don't know yet, they don't know what the wiki is, uh, what MediaWiki is, or do they already have an instance and they just want it kind of transferred over? No, I, every, everyone I, I've talked to has a wiki and they're looking to outsource the technology. They, they don't want to have, you know, they've got one engineer and they don't want to hire more and they don't even want to put that one engineer full time on it. So they want to outsource the technology um, or they've got, they're happy with their staffing levels, but not the skills. And they, they're face, you know, they've been putting off upgrades and upgrades and upgrades, and they rely on the fact that it's all inside their corporate firewall. And so, you know, they're, they're not in any huge rush to upgrade, but you reach a point where um, it's just the features aren't there and the, uh, you know, they, and then they have, a, they have a huge step, right? Instead of taking tiny steps, you got this gigantic uh, uphill slog, right? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so, and then maybe a training. So that sounds like maybe they already know what they're doing. You don't, you don't have to provide as much training or for new, uh, new extensions. You, you give them a bit of an onboarding. Uh, training, training is something that I've, uh, it depends on the customer because I've talked to a lot of companies that some want training and, the, and it usually has to do with companies that are launching new wiki initiatives. Um, Companies that are like, I know there's a company in Boston called Vistaprint that's a big, you know, big company and they've got a huge uh, wiki installation at that company and they, they've got in-house expertise and they, they've got smooth workflows and everything so they don't, they don't need, they don't need me actually because they, they, they do have 
that internal staff because it's, a, it's like a core feature of their business. But, you know, smaller groups and new initiatives and things like that. Uh, I had a couple airline companies that were implementing wiki systems and they wanted, they definitely wanted training. They, they wanted like, you know, a group of 10 or a group of 20 people to come in for training uh, for a couple of days or, and, and, they, and they wanted all kinds of training, right? Like uh, end user training and how to edit and they wanted some system administration training so that they could get more familiar with how it works. And so there's, there's good training opportunities too in, in corporate support. Can you explain a little bit about how that happened? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I, I, uh, I worked with the folks at, at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital. They had a whole bunch of uh, wikis uh, that were very core to their operations, but they were all set up several years prior by uh, a company in North Carolina that didn't support you know, they didn't have that support anymore and they had a bunch of custom extensions, they had a bunch of Java code that kind of moved stuff from a back-end wiki to a front-end wiki and they tied together some, uh, a whole document management system. So they had a large need to really upgrade their entire uh, setup and they also, it's a grant, they do a lot of research and grant funded um, projects. So when they get a new grant, one of the things that they have to do as part of the grant is to report uh, on their, you know, what was the, what did they produce with that grant? And the wiki would help them meet the grant requirements. So every time they got a new grant, they wanted a new wiki, but they wanted it to be like the last wiki. And, you know, the experience of the, what, what most people experience building wikis is like, okay, so, you, you kind of have this recipe that you go through and then you try to repeat the process and keep a good document, probably in a wiki, on how to, how to do that. Um, what, what I saw is this, uh, there had been DevOps had become a real thing, right? And there's, uh, I want to keep my eye on the time here, uh, just Puppet, Chef, Ansible, all kinds of ways of putting that recipe on how to build it in code. Not steps that you follow and you could fudge up, but li just literal code so that when I deploy Meza um, or Quality Box, it's, it's a command and you sit back and watch a thousand lines scroll by the screen as it, you know, goes out and grabs an image or, or even first, you know, like provisions a cloud, uh, you know, cluster and then installs the operating system and then installs Apache and, PHP and MySQL and, and then upgrades everything and then, you know, opens the port on the firewall to, for this machine to talk to that machine and does everything soup to nuts. And then you, it's like, ding, done. <laughs> um, so I started building that system, but then another client came to me and, and so I was building a system for partners. Another, another uh, client came to me and my system wasn't fully baked, it didn't, I couldn't, I, I was trying to do the mass virtual hosting in Apache and get the farm, the, right? The, how do you do the farm part and do it, do it right? Um, and I couldn't get that done, but this client needed it done yesterday. So I, look, I, I had fortunately already met uh, the guys here at NASA online and I was like, wow, theirs, theirs is working, so I'll just use theirs. <laughs> so I switched from Ubuntu to CentOS or, or Red Hat, and, um, and the rest is history. I've been you know, trying to uh, contribute as much as possible to that code base. Thank you.